Good day everyone, welcome back. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a marking edge similar to this. Just very simple, cheap and easy to make. Uh, and this came from a video a few weeks ago where I was making coasters and I was using this marking gauge here. Uh, it's just a cheap Chinese made store-bought one which I use most of the time. Uh, it's got rosewood and brass inserts and things like that. Um, but this one here, really cheap and easy to make. And I suggested if you'd be interested in me showing you how to make one and I got a few replies to that. So here I am. Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna be doing this style which is a simple wedge mechanism. Now I was doing a little bit of research uh, just before making this video to see where I got this design from and I couldn't find it. However, I did find a guy, I think his name's Rex Kruger, a great uh, YouTube woodworker. Uh, and he's got a design, another wedge design, symbol to make like that, except it uses a larger fence here uh, and a dowel pin, which I think this one's gonna be easier to make, but his probably works better, so I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Um, and yeah, if you don't know what a marking gauge is, it basically consists of a stem and a fence, and the fence is adjustable to the pin here, which is basically like a sharp nail, or sharp point. And you can set a distance here and mark a parallel line along a piece of timber. Uh, and that's really good for joinery and heaps of things like that. Now also, just before we get into it over at the workbench, uh, I will explain why I haven't uploaded a video last Thursday. Uh, for a temporary period, I'm not sure how long, I'm only gonna be uploading on Mondays uh, once a week, as I've got some really big kind of important things I need to take care of uh, outside. Um, I'm not sure how long that's going to take, but I'm going to need to take that as priority. And yeah, with that said, let's go to the workbench and see what we need. Okay, first things first, let's go through the materials. So for the spindle, I'm going to be using this 15mm piece of Tassie oak. Uh, the wedge, I'm using this other bit of, I believe, red oak from a pallet. For the fence, I'm going to be using this scrap of, I believe, European oak, uh, which is an offcut. Now, I chose to use oak for this just because I thought it'd be nice to keep it consistent and have it like that. However, the materials don't matter too much. Uh, harder wood will work better as it'll be uh, last longer and be a bit more resistant. However, my old marking gauge that I made, uh, similar Tazi oak spindle. However, the fence is just made out of plywood and the wedge is made out of pine and that seems to be working fine. Um, for the pin, I'm just using a small little panel kind of tack nail there, uh, which seems to work okay. Uh, it doesn't stay the sharpest or anything like that, so figure out what you want to use for that. Uh, I'm going to be using just a cheap, standard, general saw here today. Um, and also, you don't probably have to use these, but I'm going to be using a file and a rasp. Uh, just to clean up the saw marks and make it look a little bit nicer. However, that's not necessary. If you also have a coping saw, which I could have used today, um, you could probably do most of your work with that, which would also replace the chisel, which I'm going to be using here, uh, just to make a little wedge housing, I guess you could say. I'm going to be using a knife uh, to carve the wedge out of. You're going to need a pencil for marking out. Super glue, maybe not necessary, but I'm going to use it and you see what that'll be for later. And some kind of square or tri square or something like that to mark square lines with. So I tried to make it as simple as possible for this um, and trying to use the tools that are simplest as possible uh, as demonstration here. Okay, so first things first, I'm just going to cut everything to length. Uh, all of these measurements are fairly arbitrary um, and you can change them as you will. Um, this is 20 centimeters long for the stem that I'm going to be using. So I'll just cut this out and then I'll clean it up with a file. Of 
for the wedge, I'm going to be cutting out a little piece about 80 mil long by 8 mil thick and about 15 mil wide, but I'm going to be carving that later. Now with a fence, again, this is arbitrary and there's even many different designs that you can use, but I'm going to be using a slightly elongated design. So I've got 85 mil wide and 65 mil high, if you will. So I'm just going to mark a square box out there, not particularly important. Um, and what I'm also going to do with this fence is I'm going to kind of round the corners off a little bit just to make it a little bit more comfortable in the hand so i'm gonna have the wedge facing up this way so what i'm gonna do is kind of try and just give a bit of a little bit of an arc if i can which i'll probably refine with the files and rasp later so i'll just cut that out with a saw and i'll come back with the rasps and files and i'll neaten that shape over a bit Also decided to give this a little bit of sand, uh, just to give it a little bit nicer, smoother feel in the hand. Okay, and the one tool I forgot to mention is that we're going to need a drill uh, with some way of drilling a hole. You could do a bit embrace if you've got that. Uh, I'm just using a speedball bit, and I'd use a Forstner bit if I had them, just for the cleaner hole. Uh, next thing I need to do is mark out the center point on here to drill the hole in. So to do that, I'm just gonna get a straight edge. And since this isn't actually quite a square or rectangle, I'm just gonna go across to what I would imagine are the corners, to get as close to center as I can. Just like that, you don't need to go the whole way across. So that just puts pencil marks everywhere. And there you go, you can double check that if you want. So about 32 there, about 30 there, so it could go down a bit there. And 42, 42. So I'll position it down a little bit and I'll drill that hole out. What I'll do, I'll just flip around to the other side and come in so it breaks out cleanly. Another handy thing to do is now that I had drilled that hole out, I had a little bit of a burr type thing on it. So I'm just going to tip of the knife here and cleaning that away, putting a little bit of chamfer on it, making sure to go from end grain through to the long grain so it doesn't slice and split out that grain in there. 
doesn't have to be too clean, but there you go, that should slide through smoothly if I grab this other spindle here. There's most of the tool done already. Okay, so the next thing to do is pick one side of the circle. And since the wedge is about 15 or 16 mil high, I'm gonna take half of that. So I'm gonna continue a line up about eight mil up past the top of the circle there. And since the wedge is going to be about eight mil wide, I'm gonna continue a rectangle four mils either side of the line there. Just do that. And make a rectangle with that. This is where if you had a coping saw, you could just do it with a coping saw and it would probably be fine. However, I've got a chisel here, so I'm gonna come in with a chisel and work that out there and maybe clean it up with a file once I'm done. So it's handy just to slice off the end grain so it doesn't split anywhere else and it isolates your, where you want to remove. Okay, so after you've chiseled out and or filed out that keyway there, you wanna get your wedge. Uh, and what I did, I just sanded it on either side here, the width ways. Um, and what you wanna do is be able to get it so that it fits in, has a good, nice, sturdy fit in the key, but is very frictionless and easy sliding on the width ways there, as the wedging mechanism is working vertically there. So what you want to do is, since I designed this for an 8mm above the dowel, I came along here, this is going to be my wedge. Now the design doesn't really matter as long as it wedges, so I put the dowel in, actually put this the wedge in say, and looked about where I wanted it to start getting firm. So I thought about there, marked each side there, and in that period I wanted to do 8 mil here and a little bit less than 8 mil there so then by this point it's starting to actually tighten up so what I did there is then got a ruler and marked out a very shallow wedge angle um, so that it's nice and gradual and since this is oak it's quite hard and it won't compress much if you're using pine I'll do a little bit steeper as it will compress um, and then I just kind of did a bit of a design on the end and uh, the front and the back here, still a nice little round radius, and a little bit of a bigger bulb on the back uh, for your thumb to push on. So I've got this here. Now you can make this wedge however you want it to. You can cut this out and file it. Uh, I'm gonna carve just with a knife, whittle it away. Uh, I'd recommend not doing this unless you're somewhat experienced or have read about carving and whittling as it is a sharp knife right next to your hands it can be quite dangerous if you don't know what you're doing so i'm just going to whittle this away maybe touch it up with a bit of sandpaper and we'll see what happens
Okay, so we've done the wedge there. I really like how it looks. Now, with Rex Kruger, he uses, uh, to attach the pin, he uses a saw cuff there and then super glues the nail into the saw cuff, which then allows, which you can replace it and such. And that's what I was going to do as well. That's why I had the super glue at the start of the video. However, I just tried an experiment, uh, experimental piece, and it didn't really work. I haven't had much success with super glue stuff. And I think that's probably just because I get really cheap super glue. Um, and it wouldn't work for the point of this video, this project at least. So what I'm going to do today is I'm actually just going to try and drill a li real little pilot hole near the end of this dowel here and either nail and or try and super glue it in that way. So you can use this method as well. It should work pretty good. Just be careful that you don't split out the end grain there. And there you have it. Nice little nail in the end there. Now I'll see if I can try and put a bit of super glue in there, which might secure it a little bit. Uh, if you can see there, looks quite good. So there you have it everyone, this is all finished, assembles very nice and easily like that, put the wedge in, you just squish it in with your thumb, this can be a one hand operated uh, gauge, um, I'll probably still use two but the little swell I put on the back of the wedge there, it's really handy, I can get my thumb on it, move it, adjust it, push it in as I want, like that. Uh, I'm really happy with how it turned out, it's a lot nicer kind of quality I think than the last one I made. Um, so I would highly recommend using some type of harder timber if you can. Uh, now if you want to check out a different style maybe before you make one, go and head over to Rex Kruger, link in the description, uh, and check out his style. Now I probably took, if I was not filming this, I'd probably take about maybe 30, 40 minutes maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, but then that also depends on your skill level uh, and also the degree to what you want to finish it. So you know. If you want to file the edges and sand it and make it all nice and smooth and nice, that'll take longer than if you just want a really rough and ready off the saw type of thing, which will still be functional. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Please leave a comment down below what you think. With that said, please remember to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time.